Knowledge Organization Co. Organization of Knowledge, Organization of Information, or Information Organization is a branch of Library and Information Science concerned with activities such as document description, indexing, and classification performed in libraries, databases, archives, etc. It addresses the activities carried out and tools used by people who work in places that accumulate information resources e.g., books, maps, documents, datasets, images for the use of humankind, both immediately and for posterity. It discusses the processes that are in place to make resources findable, whether someone is searching for a single known item or is browsing through hundreds of resources just hoping to discover something useful. Information organization supports a myriad of information-seeking scenarios. Traditional human-based approaches performed by librarians, archivists, and subject specialists are increasingly challenged by computational big data algorithmic techniques. Co as a field of study is concerned with the nature and quality of such knowledge organizing processes such as taxonomy and ontology as well as the resulting knowledge organizing systems Divergent historical and theoretical approaches towards organizing knowledge are based on different views of knowledge, cognition, language, and social organization. This richness lends itself to many complementary ways to consider knowledge organization. The Academic International Society for Knowledge Organization engages with these issues via the research journal Knowledge Organization. Theoretical approaches One widely used analysis of organizational principles summarizes them as location, alphabet, time, category, hierarchy latch. <laughs> Traditional approaches Among the major figures in the history of Co are Melville Dewey (1851–1931) and Henry Bliss (1870–1955). Dewey's goal was an efficient way to manage library collections, not an optimal system to support users of libraries. His system was meant to be used in many libraries as a standardized way to manage collections. The first version of this system was created in 1876. An important characteristic in Henry Bliss and many contemporary thinkers of Co was that the sciences tend to reflect the order of nature and that library classification should reflect the order of knowledge as uncovered by science. Natural order to scientific classification to library classification Co the implication is that librarians, in order to classify books, should know about scientific developments. This should also be reflected in their education. Again, from the standpoint of the higher education of librarians, the teaching of systems of classification would be perhaps better conducted by including courses in the systematic encyclopedia and methodology of all the sciences, that is to say, outlines which try to summarize the most recent results in the relation to one another in which they are now studied together. Ernest Cushing Richard Richardson, quoted from Bliss, 1935, p. 2. Among the other principles, which may be attributed to the traditional approach to Co are Principle of controlled vocabulary Cutter's rule about specificity Holmes' principle of literary warrant 1911. 
principle of organizing from the general to the specific today, after more than 100 years of research and development in Li, the traditional approach still has a strong position in Ko and in many ways its principles still dominate. Topic: <laughs> Facet analytic approaches. The date of the foundation of this approach may be chosen as the publication of S. R. Ranganathan's colon classification in 1933. The approach has been further developed by, in particular, the British Classification Research Group. In many ways this approach has dominated what might be termed modern classification theory. The best way to explain this approach is probably to explain its analytico-synthetic methodology. The meaning of the term analysis is, breaking down each subject into its basic concepts. The meaning of the term synthesis is, combining the relevant units and concepts to describe the subject matter of the information package in hand. Given subjects as they appear in, for example, book titles are first analyzed into a few common categories, which are termed facets. Ranganathan proposed his PMEST formula, personality, matter, energy, space and time. The information retrieval tradition Important in the IR tradition have been, among others, the Cranfield experiments, which were founded in the 1950s, and the TREC experiments text retrieval conferences starting in 1992. It was the Cranfield experiments, which introduced the famous measures recall and precision as evaluation criteria for systems efficiency. The Cranfield experiments found that classification systems like UDC and facet analytic systems were less efficient compared to free text searches or low-level indexing systems The Cranfield I test found according to Ellis 1996, 3-6 the following results. Although these results have been criticized and questioned, the IR tradition became much more influential while library classification research lost influence. The dominant trend has been to regard only statistical averages. What has largely been neglected is to ask, are there certain kinds of questions in relation to which other kinds of representation, for example, controlled vocabularies, may improve recall and precision? <laughs> User-oriented and cognitive views The best way to define this approach is probably by method. Systems based upon user oriented approaches must specify how the design of a system is made on the basis of empirical studies of users. User studies demonstrated very early that users prefer verbal search systems as opposed to systems based on classification notations. This is one example of a principle derived from empirical studies of users. Adherents of classification notations may, of course, still have an argument, that notations are well defined and that users may miss important information by not considering them. Folksonomies is a recent kind of co based on users rather than on librarians or subject specialists indexing. Bibliometric approaches These approaches are primarily based on using bibliographical references to organize networks of papers, mainly by bibliographic coupling introduced by Kessler 1963 or co-citation analysis independently suggested by Marshakova 1973 and Small 1973. 
In recent years it has become a popular activity to construe bibliometric maps as structures of research fields. Two considerations are important in considering bibliometric approaches to CO. The level of indexing depth is partly determined by the number of terms assigned to each document. In citation indexing this corresponds to the number of references in a given paper. On the average, scientific papers contain 10 to 15 references, which provide quite a high level of depth. The references, which function as access points, are provided by the highest subject expertise, the experts writing in the leading journals. This expertise is much higher than that which library catalogues or bibliographical databases typically are able to draw on. The domain analytic approach Domain analysis is a sociological epistemological standpoint. The indexing of a given document should reflect the needs of a given group of users or a given ideal purpose. In other words, any description or representation of a given document is more or less suited to the fulfillment of certain tasks. A description is never objective or neutral, and the goal is not to standardize descriptions or make one description once and for all for different target groups. The development of the Danish Library may serve as an example that explains the domain analytic point of view. KVINFO was founded by the librarian and writer Nine Koch and its history goes back to 1965. Nine Koch was employed at the Royal Library in Copenhagen in a position without influence on book selection. She was interested in women's studies and began personally to collect printed catalogue cards of books in the Royal Library, which were considered relevant for women's studies. She developed a classification system for this subject. Later she became the head of KVINFO and got a budget for buying books and journals, and still later, KVINFO became an independent library. The important theoretical point of view is that the Royal Library had an official systematic catalogue of a high standard. Normally it is assumed that such a catalogue is able to identify relevant books for users whatever their theoretical orientation. This example demonstrates, however, that for a specific user group feminist scholars, an alternative way of organising catalogue cards was important. In other words, different points of view need different systems of organisation. DA is the only approach to CO which has seriously examined epistemological issues in the field, i.e. comparing the assumptions made in different approaches to CO and examining the questions regarding subjectivity and objectivity in CO. Subjectivity is not just about individual differences. Such differences are of minor interest because they cannot be used as guidelines for CO. What seems important are collective views shared by many users. A kind of subjectivity about many users is related to philosophical positions. In any field of knowledge different views are always at play. In arts, for example, different views of art are always present. Such views determine views on artworks, writing on artworks, how artworks are organized in exhibitions and how writings on art are organized in libraries see Oram 2003. In general it can be stated that different philosophical positions on any issue have implications for relevance criteria, information needs and for criteria of organizing knowledge. See also Automatic document classification Document classification 
Information ecology Knowledge organization systems Library classification Library and information science Personal information management Body of knowledge Dewey Decimal Classification <laughs>